I think that the most common thread that we have as human beings is our relationships, our connection to another human being. Now that may come in many different forms, but I like that you're nodding your head, sir. I totally agree too. I think this one is probably the most dynamic topic that we can get into because it is the relationship of the love, the romance, the seeking the partnership. Um, so our next guest is no stranger to covering, covering this topic because his articles in The Atlantic have gone viral with his groundbreaking advice on every relationship scenario. He is a distinguished Harvard professor, a best-selling author with Oprah Winfrey, and he is an expert on the science that is going to help guide us in the right direction. Please know that I will be listening and taking notes through this entire time with the esteemed, our dear friend of the show, Arthur Brooks. I think today's subject is very ripe. Yeah, very for sure. poignant. Why is it so well, important to everyone? So we're built to love, and the most intense kind of love that we experience is romantic love. We want that as human beings. We're wired for that, and yet it's hard to find. It's very hard to maintain. And so the most important topic that I talk about with my students, I have a class for the business students at Harvard, and the most popular module that I teach is called falling in love and staying in love, the business of your life. That's what people want to talk about. They want to talk about the science of it so they can apply it to their lives and, and be happier as people. I did not know I could equate science to love. I know. The science of romantic love is just mind-blowing. We actually know what's happening to our brains when we're falling in love. You can take the, a brain scan of somebody in the throes of the most passionate romantic love and compare it to somebody who's addicted to methamphetamine and you can't tell the difference between their brains because it's so powerful. You can literally become addicted to another person and you can see it in brain scans. People say, why do I feel like I'm so out of control? Because you are in these moments. And so I'll walk people through what's actually happening and I'll say, they'll say, look, I, I, I've, you know, I'm a very responsible person. I have control of my life. Why did I send 100 text messages over the past hour? And I'll say, well, here's what's going on in your brain. But that's not good enough because we also need to understand that and manage it. And that's really what we have to talk about is how we can understand what's going on inside, inside our brains and our hearts and change our habits so that we can fall in love and stay in love and be happier as people. Well, let's get into some audience questions because Good. I love this because yeah. I, I have so many questions and I think a lot of themes can be quite universal but also beautifully specific. So let's get into all of it. Rossi, my partner in life, Rossi. Hi. Hi. Go up first. Dawn in our audience who has a question about building a relationship. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Hi, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. So my question is, uh, well, basically, I, I was married for 10 years. I have a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old. Um, we got married in 2012. But about a year and a half ago, we separated. And so I'm still in love with her. And so I have trouble with moving on. Like, so I guess my question is, how do I rebuild that relationship or, or get past that to to find happiness again? Yeah. Don, I feel for you. I really feel for you. I'm so sorry about the, the, the disillusion of your marriage. And, and I hope you have a wonderful relationship with your kids. And are you friends with your ex-wife? Yes, we get along good. We co-parent together. That's great. Um, That's great. But you're still in love. So let, let me explain a tiny little bit of science of your brain and then give you a hard assignment, mm -hmm. okay? So the part of your brain that's dedicated to you feeling grief when you have a breakup, it's called the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. You don't have to remember that. But it's a part of your brain dedicated to you feeling sadness when you're apart from somebody that you actually love. We have it through evolution because we're not supposed to be separated from our loved ones and we need to feel pain so that we don't you know, wind up outside the tribe, you know, walking the frozen tundra by ourselves. The problem is that it hurts an awful lot when something inevitably happens in certain relationships, and that's the grief that you feel, almost as if there'd been a death. The problem is that you're not supposed to feel that grief forever, 
and you extend that pain when you keep holding out hope that this, this thing is going to be restored. So here's the assignment, if you're willing to take it, so that you can heal your heart. You need to go to your ex-wife and say, I need to ask you a very hard question. And I don't want the answer yes, and I don't want the answer no. I want the truth from you. I need the truth from you. Is there a chance? And if she says no, then it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to take a break. And, and, and you know what? You need a summer break, Don. You need a summer break. And what that means is you're going to keep communicating with your ex-wife on logistics around your, around your kids, to be sure, but not more than that. And you're going to ask your friends if there's somebody that you should get to know. And you're going to maybe go away by yourself for a little bit, a little while to think and maybe read some new books. And you're going to give yourself permission to move on from that. Because if she says that it's finished, you have to trust her. If you love her, you have to trust her. You have to let her go. And Don, you have to let you go. Because that's the only way that you're going to heal from this. Wow. Good luck. Thank How you. does that feel? I just want to, I'm curious, does that sound terrifying to you or does that sound comforting to you? No, it's comforting. Yeah. It's comforting. Yeah. Can you do that? Can you ask I, her? Yeah, definitely. Well, and you're going to be okay too, Don. Yeah. You're going to be okay. It's going to be okay.